Welcome back. It's another episode of the Bench Mob Podcast, another installment. I am here with my bro, Miles, your host, Antonio. This is still not worried. Uh, we're going to get straight into it. Heat Celtics recap. The Heat were able to finally close out the series. 125-113. Your first takeaways from this game, them clinching a finals trip. Well, I thought for, for a little bit there we were going to – maybe get a game seven out of the series, but towards the end, you know, the heat just turned it on. Bam just took over. The Celtics just were taking dumb shot after dumb shot. They kept just chucking threes at the end. Like that's how you catch up. Like you're not the Warriors, you're the Celtics. Calm down, get some points on the board. But it was a good game up until the end. Like Jason Tatum, he kind of these last couple games he's been doing this where he doesn't really do much in the first half then that third quarter he comes out like guns a blazing but this is it's a learning experience for the Celtics again I mean they're still young they got these pieces here for a while they got a big three now just time to build around it and while like the heat it's a little different like they somehow they they're back here after you know, you most places where LeBron leaves, they just you don't hear about them anymore. They're not on ESPN. They're not on ABC. They're on maybe Disney Channel, but it's not it's not a game that you want to watch. But the Heat, like, cause they they're run by Pat Riley. They got a good organization. They put good pieces together that complement each other. Like a lot of people were coming at Jimmy saying, like, he's a bad teammate, all this stuff. But, like, year one, we we're already in the finals. So all his teammates on the Heat say he's great. And I'm sure there's other guys out there that will say he's great. It's just some people can't deal with that type of leadership. Somebody who, like, he's real direct with how he thinks and how he feels and wants you to be on that same level as him. I mean, that's not asking too much. And especially okay. – how can't you love Jimmy, though? He yeah. was rocking Tyler Hero's high school jersey, and then last night he was rocking Eric Spoelstra's college jersey. I didn't even know Eric Spoelstra played in college. I didn't even know you could get his jersey yet alone. So how can you be mad at Jimmy as a teammate? You can't. Already gave, yeah, gave Tyler Hero the cosign that he got some hood tendencies. I mean, you can't, as a teammate, you can't be mad at Jimmy. Some takeaways, Bam, 32-14-5. Bam really went off last night, especially that third quarter. Second, the fourth, fourth quarter, he was able to close it out. Jimmy Butler did his thing, 22-8. and eight. But we had an Iggy sighting, an Iggy sighting. Iggy came in in a closeout game, barely has played this series, and was able – to go five for five from the field, four for four from three point, and 15 points. Shout out to Iggy, uh, obviously a professional and a champion. He just stayed ready. And shout out to Spolstra to put him in. It's a closeout game. They really able to close it out and um, in part a lot towards how Iggy played and his impact on both ends of the floor. Um, the Celtics, last thing we'll say about them, they remind me of the Falcons. This series, they have not been able to close out any games. I don't know why. I think, like you mentioned, they settled for a lot of three-pointers. It was, was, what, three, four minutes left in the game, they started chucking up threes. You still could have been trying to get two-pointers and just play good defense. It wasn't even a time to, to rush yet. And you were shooting three-pointers as if it was worth five, ten points. Chip away at the lead and get back to it, so – Uh, They got a bright future. We'll see how they do next year. But we have to look forward and advance on Wednesday, game one. Lakers heat in the finals. Um, A lot of people did not choose this at the beginning of the year. Who you got in this series? I'm going to say it now. I've been saying it on social media, Lakers at five. How you see this series going? Probably same, like Lakers in five or six at the most, I think. I just don't. I think the Lakers are on a mission and it's just a lot of things that happened this year. And plus it's like LeBron, he sees it. It's like right near his grasp. Now you just got to finish. Cause I mean, game, <laughs> game five for LeBron 
against the Nuggets was that was what we can probably expect in the finals because he knows that it's right there. Number four is right there. It's been a while since he's had that real opportunity, but it's 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 in it's in reaching distance. So, but for the series, I think it's going to be competitive. I think these two teams match up well. Like Bam, he's going to definitely be on AD most of the time, and that should be a good matchup. That's probably the key to the series, honestly. If Bam has better games than AD, then those games, the Heat are probably winning. So we'll see what happens with that. But then it comes down to, like, who's D and LeBron and who's D and Caldwell Pope, I guess, because he's the number three option at this point. It's crazy that those words are being used in a sentence, but that's how it is right now. He's – He's hey, that's old Cruz's head. That's old Cruz's head. He should have stepped up. But that's fine. Cruz, he's doing the little things. He's cutting. He's doing. He's not chucking threes and doing dumb stuff anymore. He's he's making good plays. Like that last game was big. He's like hitting shots, cutting for when LeBron has the ball. Like that's what you need to do. Like open shooters and cutters for LeBron because he's gonna see you. But like I said, Caldwell Pope's been playing well. I mean, JR is just here for the Henny at the end when they win the championship because he's not getting in the series, I don't think. He's he's here just in case somebody gets hurt or, you know, the game's out of reach at this point. I, I don't even know why they brought him here at this point because it's like him and Deion Waiters are just – they're here for the ride. They're like Udonis Haslam, just – just riding. <laughs> I think if JR does come into the game, he can't have an impact. Deion Waiters is still injured, so they got to check. Um, I think some keys for Miami, if they are able, I think will be competitive, but if they are able to win this series, it's going to be two main things, I believe, for them. They need to rebound both games in regular season. They were out rebounding 48 to 37 and 50 to 34. They can't they got to have it closer. I don't think they'll ever out-rebound the Lakers because of their length, but they got to do a better job on the boards. And you're going to have to have a huge series from Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero. If they're able to play like they played this past series, Tyler Hero, that 37-point game, Duncan Robinson, five three-pointers last night in a closeout game, that gives them a chance to actually win the series. But that's an if. Those are the two things I think for them. And for the Lakers – as we, I just mentioned, they got to re- kill them on the boards, kill them on the – Dwight has to play like he played last series, be a bully on the boards. Um, AD can't – this series can't give me two boards a game. That's not – that's not <laughs> – that's not going to work. And the role players, if you open, play off Rondo, uh, Kuz, call up Hope, knock down your threes. That, they do that. It's definitely in five. AD and Bron, I believe, is going to show up. Uh, scoring wise, it's just his AD is going to rebound. I see Bron. I'll say it now. I see something like 28, 11, and 8 for this series. And I think he's going to end up getting the, uh, actually the finals MVP. AD's been doing a good job scoring and whatnot throughout the playoffs and the regular season. But this Bron time, he, he needs that fourth one. I think he's just about to go back into that, like, that closeout game, the 30, 11, and 10 or something. Yeah. I see that happen in this whole series. I see Bron turning it back up. I hope so. Because if, if he does, then I don't see the Heat really giving them trouble. But, I mean, Spolstra's a good coach, so I'm sure they have some things they've been planning. I, I know they've seen this coming, so they they might have been thinking ahead. Might be why they lost game five, but at this point now, it's it's Miami and L.A. Let's see what happens. Yeah, L.A. and five. Like, um, transition into the flag on the play segment. As y'all know, except for the climb, we're going to go some random topics at Miles, see if he wants to continue on with them. Uh, first one that we got right here, PB&J chicken wings, except or the climb. I'll accept it just because that sounds different, but on some nights that might be hidden for sure. (laughs) 
So a lot of restaurants now, that's becoming their new flavor. Uh, a couple restaurants in Rhode Island, a couple restaurants in New York. That their thing now is to have PB and J wings. Are those some wings that you would actually uh, try out? The jelly wings, maybe. That doesn't sound terrible. But peanut butter, like chicken, it's already tough to eat chicken. I mean, it's tough to eat peanut butter straight like that. Then you put it on chicken. Now you got to chew it, and it's, it's not. It's not going to end up well because I don't know what you even drink with that. Do you drink milk? Do you drink juice? I uh, I don't know what you would drink with that. I can, I was looking at some of the recipes and uh, restaurants. They you know they melt down the peanut butter to help you chew it like a peanut oh. butter jelly type of sauce on top of it. I I would try it just to try it. But it would have to be like a group event. Like, we all put money on. I'm not putting my money on the wings just by myself. Because what if I don't like it? That's 12 wings down the drain. So, a group event? Yeah, we try it out. Hey, y'all could get that for me for my birthday. It's, it's coming up in a, a couple weeks. So, if y'all want to try it, I'm down. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, I'll remember that. Uh, <laughs> next one. Mike Tyson's trainer says him and Mike are on the same page that they – believe they can fight uh Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder after uh this match with Roy Jones except or decline I'll accept it I mean he'll make it's all about money at this point he's like one of the biggest names in boxing history so if he really thinks he could fight those guys I mean there would be a lot of things that would have to happen before that I'm sure he'd have to fight an actual fighter not a retired washed up Roy Jones Jr. who's having second thoughts I think that would be fun him and Wilder two guys that just throw heavy heavy punches and it's basically who's gonna get knocked out first and if I'm Deontay you got the height but the way Mike Tyson's been looking at his workouts I don't know if I'm like you take a punch to the gut you might be 10 count on your knees. Yeah, I, this is what his trainer had to say. I believe Mike Tyson can do it. If he put his mind, he want to fight for the belt one day, why not? Why? Who says it's impossible to do? He's fighting every single day in the gym, and I believe the best still is to come. I don't think at his age um, <laughs> that'll be the wisest thing, especially like Deontay Wilder, who hits just as hard maybe harder being that he's younger yeah might get hit a certain type of way at his age we might be that's another star that died in 2020 so i think he need to uh fight roy jones and leave it at that not these uh actual people that still in it and got what 20 30 years on you i'm i'm good on that mike next one seven hour flights to nowhere Accept or decline. So, is that the name of a place? Like, is that, or just, you just hop on a flight and you don't know where you're going. It's just where you land is where you end. It? I'll accept it. I'll accept it. So Qantas um, Air Airlines are offering seven hour flights to nowhere. So you can get on the airplane, mm -hmm. you eat, nice food, all that, and you just stay on the plane and come back. So, for example, you get on at North Airport and then come back in North Airport seven hours later. Price is starting at five seventy five a ticket. Like $5.75 or $500? 500? dollars i am getting on a, a ticket. Like that costs that much. You better be taking me to a nice Caribbean area. <laughs> I'm not with it. I know people is bored doing this quarantine. Yeah, no, I can't. That's I know they're stupid. bored, but it's like the dumbest thing I heard. The best, exactly. The best part of the plane of getting on a plane is landing somewhere else. Yeah. I don't want to like take a flight, go to sleep or whatever, and then wake up and I'm back in Newark. That would be depressing. And That's I would too in that air airport, airline, all that. Like you deceived me. <laughs> They said, hey, right now, people was actually buying it. I think the ticket, highest ticket was up to around 1200 which is probably for first class and special meals. 
somebody's buying it. So speaking of uh, heavy prices, number four, next one, Gucci and their grass stained jeans, fake grass stains, accept or decline. I'm going to decline it because uh, these designers just, they come up with these ideas that make no sense. Like I, I would never want a grass stain on me on purpose, let alone by accident. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why? That's a, and it's Gucci. So, you know, it's going to be like well over a hundred dollars for that. So, Oh, um, um, since we talking about it now, it's 1400. Well, that's but even more reason. If you want me to stain your pants, I'll do it. I'll, I'll create a, <laughs> a jean stainer. If that's what y'all doing, I I can do that for you. Yeah. For the low low. Fourteen hundred. So, situation like that with fashion, I always wonder. Fashion, some of these trash TV shows, some of these trash movies, it has to go through multiple people to say yes. And then they decide to put it out. So somebody at Gucci came with the idea and multiple people was like, yes, all right, we're going to put this out in mass production. That's, that's what always boggles my mind. Everybody has crazy ideas, but somebody approved it and said, let's go with it. I mean, it'll sell, I feel like, because, I, I mean, I don't think everybody had ripped jeans selling like that but then you know people thought it was cool like yo how'd you do that it was like i tripped i didn't do it on <laughs> purpose uh they're like oh you should you should sell sell jeans like that like all right well and now all these years later that's a thing like people purposely buy like ripped jeans and ripped shirts too like you got attacked by wolverine or something but hey it's it's style you just put all you got to do is put a, a big enough name brand on it and people will buy it like it. they can't do it themselves. It's, it's funny. Yeah, I'm not with it, but um, <laughs> that's fashion transitioning. It was a jam-packed weekend of football again. Um, week three is not complete. We have, you know, the Ravens, Chiefs games tonight, but some headlines, some takeaways from this week three, a lot of uh, you know, quarterback changes, situation with teams blowing leads. First one we're going to touch on is Mitch Trubisky. Mitch Trubisky was benched for Nick Foles. Um, do you think he gets his job back? Is this going to be something permanent? Nick Foles was able to have three touchdowns. Trubisky had a couple of interceptions. Um, how do you see this one panning out for Chicago? I mean, the Bears gave him a shot to start the season and I think that was more so to do with they invested such a high pick in him already that let's see if he can improve a little bit and if he does then having foals is a luxury but I mean that luxury kind of helps them because they were gonna lose that game probably and then they put Nick Foles in and like he does he just brought them back and I don't really see Trubisky having that job again and this is probably his last year possibly being a starter. He just hasn't shown like any growth as a quarterback. And it makes it even worse because you look at it and the two quarterbacks drafted after him are like, they've already been paid. One has a Super Bowl. They're both like top five quarterbacks. Maybe one's borderline, but then you – how do you even explain that to your fans that, I mean, we, we have to keep going with Trubisky because, you know, he's a third pick, all that stuff. But no, if he doesn't have it, pull him. Like that's going to, that might be a theme with a lot of teams this year. I don't want to say my team because it could be towards the end. If we're in the right spot, then we might be going for a QB change too, but it it happens. Like, you kind of have to pivot. That's what the Cardinals did. They saw Josh Rosen wasn't a good fit with this other coach and they had the number one pick. So instead of trying to like beef the team up 
in other areas, I mean, the most important position in football and probably sports is quarterback. Without a good quarterback, you're going to be what the Browns have been for an eternity. And that's like, that's rough. That's, that's tough. So, but okay. Trubisky, yeah, you're done. You're done, bro. Um, the team that they played against where it ended up working out for the Chicago Bears to win was the Falcons. The Falcons were up 26-10 in the fourth. Again, a fourth quarter, big lead, blown by the Falcons. At this point, who do we put this blame on? Who do we look to for the Falcon struggles in the fourth quarter? You got to put it on everybody. The coach, the coordinators, the, the, the quarterback, like Matt Ryan. For as good as he's been all these years, he's just, I don't know. Ever since that Super Bowl loss, it's just been like a downward spiral for this team. And it's not like they don't have talent. They got probably the best one-two punch for receiver in the league. But that still is not good enough. So what's surprising is that this coach still has a job. <laughs> he still has a job. That's like a lot of these coaches that aren't winning. They, the fact that they have a job just blows my mind. I mean, I get it that you don't want to fire a coach this early in the season because then it just – it's almost like you're giving up on the season. But sometimes a fresh start could actually help. That definitely could help my Jets. So hopefully I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that after Thursday night, if we – probably lose to the Broncos, then Gase won't be here next week. And that's probably the best news I've heard in a while. <laughs> next, hey, if, if the big man's listening upstairs, take, take Dolan out too. We need him to go the Knicks too. Help all my New York teams. <laughs> uh, speaking of, you know, I was talking to you about this earlier. For all the listeners, we, I have a confession. I am no longer of a fan of any football team. I root for everybody now. So, um, I know Cowboys. That, if y'all need clarity, he, he was rooting for the Cowboys. That's been his team. And that no longer is the case. Um, I'm, I'm more invested in just fantasy. It actually works out better for me. Uh, that division is terrible. If we go back in the tape, Miles said that the NFC East would be the worst division in the league. And let's go down of how their Sunday went yesterday. Washington loses to the Browns 20 to 34. The Philadelphia Eagles tied the Bengals 23-23. Dallas loses to Seattle 31-38. And the Giants didn't even get double digits. Lost 9 to 36. Um okay too that's the thing they lost to some backups like they didn't have any like their quarterback was out running backs out receivers out and the tight end was out and the backup tight end got hurt and they still couldn't do anything against the 49ers that's why I mean the fact the Giants almost pulled a Jets bringing in Jason Garrett and thinking that all right maybe he could help our quarterback like he did those other guys but you can't bring mediocre coaching in and expect it to all of a sudden change. Like, that's just how these guys are. I mean, not everybody can, like, change their philosophy, change their outlook on what it takes to win. Like, Adam Gase, he's a lost cause. I don't even think he deserves a college coordinator position at this point. Like, he, he robbed us. He'll get his money for these next couple years that were left on the deal, but – Jets fans will be happier to pay him to not be here than for him to coach out the rest of his contract because he is garbage. Jason Garrett, he's not garbage, but he's he's borderline. <laughs> <laughs> when you look at this division, who do you think could possibly turn this around um, and get into the playoffs? Are we going to see a 7-9 a and nine team uh, getting into the playoffs from the NFC East? Um, I think of all the team, I mean, it's, a, it's really only a two team race at this team at, at this point. And it's like the Eagles, Cowboys, but they, if they keep losing. It's just going to be, I don't know. It's just going to push 
these teams even further. Like, they're already asking questions of, like, do you bench Carson Wentz, which is nuts. But, I mean, it's a little warranted because you can't lose to the Redskins week one and then you tie a team that is probably one of the worst teams in the league. They had the number one pick. So that shows you that, – that paints a picture right there for – Eagles fans, but like the Cowboys, I mean, they're still kind of in first place right now. So there's reasons to be optimistic, but I mean, they're losing to all these good teams and their defense, <laughs> yeah, the defense is awful. Uh, they've given up around 80 points over the last two weeks and each game they've given up at least 425 yards. So, I mean, at some point, either they're going to bring in Earl Thomas or they're just going to accept that this defense is what it is. Dak is going to have to throw it a lot because we're going to be losing most of these games. And that's that. I mean, Jerry Jones, I don't even know at this point. <laughs> he doesn't he, – I don't think he knows how to build a team because the way it was built in the 90s when they were winning, that was different. Now – it's almost like he just throws money at his problems and thinks, hey, that, that, that'll help us win. Like, that only really works with one team, and it hasn't worked in, like, 10 years, and that's the Yankees. Like, they're the only team that can throw money at people, good people, and it work out. Because the, the Cowboys have done that time in and time out, and it just never works out. Like, Demarcus Lawrence, he's not even the best pass rusher on this team anymore. Like, a guy who hasn't played in five years is your best pass rusher, pass rusher which just blows my mind. It, like, shout out to Alden Smith. He, he doesn't even get enough credit, but he has four sacks on the year. That's your best defender. Like, I don't, I don't get it. I know there's been injuries, like Sean Lee. I mean, at this point, you just got to go into the season thinking Sean Lee's going to start off hurt. And I don't know. It's, <laughs> He's rubbing off on Vander Esch in the wrong wrong way, because he's always hurt now too. So I don't know. Cowboys got a they got a lot to fix, but good good thing for them. They don't play in the NFC West, which is the best division. They play in the NFC East, so it's it's fairly easy. You play these teams six times in a year. Like you should beat. I mean, they should beat the Redskins, the Giants. So that's four wins right there. And the Eagles haven't really shown much. So if they can't beat the Eagles, then they can't win the division. But like you said, it might be a a losing record or a 500 record that wins the division because I don't see these teams as like Super Bowl contenders. Yeah, regardless of the fact, even if they turn it around, they're struggling against these better teams that are obviously going to be playoff teams. Um, if they make the playoffs, it'll probably be a first round exit nobody thinking about anybody at nfc east you've uh mentioned in depth your disgust with the uh jets um a team in your division that has been balling the bills is josh allen the real deal josh allen uh, again yesterday four passing touchdowns one rushing touchdowns five tds no turnovers um are the Bills and Josh Allen the real deal? Are we talking about MVP conversation with him? He's definitely up there for sure. Like the growth in his game is like night and day from like last year. Cause I was, I was tooting the horn saying Sam was better, but you can also look at both situations and what each player has been put in a position to be like Josh Allen they set him up for success. They put a line around him. They got him weapons. They got him Stefan Diggs. <laughs> like now you can let him make, make choices out there, make him throw. And this year he's throwing it a lot more than he's running it, which is probably that next step for him as a quarterback. And yeah, they're three and oh, definitely a real threat in the, in the East. I mean, uh, the NFC, the AFC East. 
I mean, that's probably their division to lose at this point. So we'll we'll see. But yeah, the Bills are the real deal, and Josh Allen, he's the real deal. It's what happens when you, you know, build a team the right way. And if you want to look down further in New York, you could see how you don't build teams the the right way. You could just look at the Giants and the Jets. So yeah, speaking of the Giants and the Jets, um, do any of these teams have any chance of turning it around or are they basically competing to try to get a, a top pick? What's your takeaways on both of these teams? Um, New York sports right now is just their best hope is the Yankees as of right now. I think with the Jets, it's just – it's not it's not pretty right now. And a lot of the blame is the head coach because he's been the same coach – since Miami and we thought it would be different. He would help Sam grow. And he's literally taken Sam who is only 23. He's in his third year starting and he's just getting worse. And it's, you can't blame anybody for that, but Gase. And I mean, Sam, he has to, he has to grow a little bit. Like three interceptions yesterday. And two, two pick sixes, I know. Two pick sixes, and one was in the, the you know, the end zone, the red zone. Red so. zone, yeah. I know. It's, I don't have any excuses for him right now. Like, I've tried, like, no weapons, no blocking, which is true. But at the end of the day, you have to produce. And right now, I mean, to only score seven points yesterday and – to not really be close in any of these first three games. It's kind of like painting a picture what the season is going to be like, but we'll see when these, these guys do come back healthy, what happens? Like, do we start winning some games or are we a little more competitive? I just think that when these guys come back, it'll look a lot different because I don't think the head coach will be there. I think they'll promote Greg Williams to be the head coach since he has experience with that in Cleveland, and yeah, that's that. I'm done venting on them, but the Giants, I don't know. Like they brought this guy Joe Judge in to bring basically the Patriots way. That's what the Lions did with Matt Pat- Matt Patricia. Tongue twisters all over the place, but Patricia has been awful for the Lions, and this is probably his last season as their coach. And Joe Judge, he's – I don't know. He's – not everybody can be Bill Belichick, just like not everybody can be Phil Jackson. So <laughs> – Do you think he gets a pass with, uh, you know, Saquon being out, Berlin Shepard's been injured? Do you think he gets, like, a, a pass with this star? I mean, he's not going to get fired off the bat just because this team wasn't ex- exactly looked at as a playoff team. They're still under construction. The defense is – been a little better like that defense has played pretty good this year it's just the offense is shaky like Daniel Jones I know all Giants fans think that he could be the next Eli but I just don't see it like he has all the weapons that you would want like I wish we we could get those weapons in in green and white but we can't but the Giants they're not they're not a good team right now no team in New York is good besides the Bills. And that's just how things are. That's It's unfortunate that, hey, I mean, if the Jets end up with the number one pick, which at this point it kind of looks like that's where we're headed, then you almost have to jump ship. You almost have to, like, Adam Gase and Sam Darnold are tied together basically at this point. For two years, they haven't really – done as much as you'd hoped or seen as much growth as you'd hope so that's why I mean I know Sam hears it but the Trevor Lawrence news and hope is starting to gain some steam after each day and I mean I was the one trying to like be like all right that's not what we need we don't need a QB change but if we have the number one pick I mean Sam didn't play well I mean his players didn't play well on this team so Sam's coming up on an extension at some point. 
And do we feel confident giving him an extension right now? I'd say no, not really. So that's the thing with these rookie quarterbacks. When you draft them, you, that's a great time to try to win because you're not really paying them that much. They're, they're getting like yeah. a, a little less than what they normally would get, but it's, it's, still, it's still a discount. So the best time to win is get that really good quarterback as a rookie those four or five years he's under contract, you build around that guy and you try to win before you have to pay him that extension because that really weighs down the cap, the quarterback, because they're always going to be the highest paid on the team. But I don't know. I'm like, I don't want to jump ship on Sam because he's like, he's, he's a good kid. He's, he's kind of like taking this beating like a man and, everybody's kind of like down on him, hating on him. He's just kind of trying to take it one day at a time. But at some point you got to start putting some good film out there and showing that you could actually be good if we have pieces. But right now, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is, Hey, he might be the guy in New York, not in, in, uh, in blue and white, but in green, green and white. So. Yeah, I think uh, both of these teams, the biggest issues with them, where the coaches on it, it's going to be looking at how they would uh, develop these quarterbacks. I think both teams knew they weren't going to be anything of a threat this year. So it's who keeps their job between these two. It, it all depends on how they, their quarterbacks perform um, for both teams. You're not, you're not going to – in the NFL, you're not really going to fire a coach after one year. He's, he's at least going to get a second year to try to show. Because, I mean, like you said, Saquon got hurt. Some unfortunate other stuff, like, had a couple linemen opt out because of the virus, which, I mean, that's something you can't control. But um, the one who's likely to get fired is Gase. And at this point, it's not likely. It's a given that he's going to be fired after this year just because they're evaluating him now which is good and that's mainly because fans are so heated that this guy is still here he gives these same answers and the game plan every sunday is it's like watching paint dry it's it's boring it's awful i can't i try to watch the games myself and at that point after the first couple drives i just turn to red zone because i can't i'd rather watch the cardinals play thousands of miles away than my own team, so. Uh, um, speaking of the quarterbacks, we just mentioned two quarterbacks that are struggling. Josh Allen is playing well. We have a huge quarterback matchup tonight with the Ravens and the Chiefs. How do you see this one going um, between Ravens and the Chiefs? Are the Chiefs going to be able to, you know, get the win? You have the Ravens winning this game. And second part – if by any chance you had a chance to start a franchise, if you had to choose one of them, who would you choose? Uh, Mahomes. I feel like easy Mahomes just because, I mean, down the road, running quarterbacks don't always last just because they're always – that's just another avenue for them to get hit. Like you already get hit enough in the pocket. And Lamar, he took some shots last year, and he's a tough kid, but – you can't do that for 15. How long's Brady been in the league? 20 years. You can't. You can't do that. Like Brady's lasted this long because he's as mobile as a turtle. Like he's not gonna exactly scare you running. Like Mahomes can run, but he's smart with it. He's more focused on passing and with the weapons that they have. That's that's gonna be the case for years to come. But like you said, Mahomes probably the best option of those two. I mean, clearly he's MVP through 50 touchdowns next year, won the Super Bowl. <laughs> he's the face of the league at this point. I mean, it's no longer Tom Brady. It's Mahomes. No wonder like they put this game primetime Monday night. And because last year it was on like Sunday at like one o'clock four four thirty. but they know these two teams are almost guaranteed a collision course at some point in the playoffs, if that's not in the championship game. Like, this is what people want to see. 
And what makes it even sweeter is it's two black quarterbacks that are at the top of the league making a name for their teams and for themselves. That's something that is a theme lately in the league right now is the black quarterback is, is on the rise right now. And Hey, that's what we want. We want to see that. And maybe the black coach will be on the rise at some point too. But for now I'll settle for the top, basically the top five is almost all black, which is, that's pretty cool. That puts a smile on my face, but we'll, we'll see. Who do you think is going to win this one? It's tough because the Ravens defense is, they're not playing this year. Like they're, I would have thought that Earl Thomas getting rid of him would make it a slow start. But, I mean, none of these teams have really made it close, which has kind of like hurt me because I have Lamar in fantasy and he hasn't had to put up numbers like that because none of these games have been competitive. Like he hasn't had to run it as much. He hasn't had to throw it as much. So I'm hoping tonight, I'm really hoping that the this game's a shootout. I need Lamar to – he needs like 150 on the ground, a couple touchdowns, and maybe 300 and a couple in the air too. I got Baltimore winning it. Um, Chiefs kind of struggled last week with the Chargers, which could have just been, you know, that week. But I think Baltimore, how they've been playing, and they've been, as you mentioned, steamrolling the competition so far. So I see Baltimore winning it. Ultimately, like if they meet in the playoffs, I, I'm not going against Andy Reid and the champs. Um, so I'd see them winning if it came down to the playoffs. On the point spread, Kansas City is plus three. Are you taking that the spread on that one, or how are you going about it with that? Plus three. What's the over? It's got to be like uh, 55. Over under 50. Okay. 53 and a half. 53 and a half. Um, I feel like that's the more likely pick than taking one of these teams. Like it's, it's tough. Like, these two teams are good. And if I had to take a spread, I would probably take the Chiefs minus yeah. three. I just think that, I mean, when it comes down to crunch time, Mahomes really gets it done more so than Lamar. Because, I mean, as we've seen, Lamar, he's 0-2 in the playoffs. This is different, but this is kind of like a playoff game tonight. It's two of the best teams, probably the two best teams in the league going at it. So, it should be fun. It's definitely going to be fun. But, yeah, I'm definitely going to take over. Yeah, I'm tuning in for this for sure. Um, I'm not putting – I am I would keep my hands off of this one uh, just because it could turn into a shootout. It could be a close game. And it's going to be somebody that's going to be hurting when Mahomes throw a touchdown with, like, 10 seconds left and now the spread. Like, somebody's going to be hurting. Um, but – how was this week for you in fantasy? I know for me, I went 3-0 this week in all of my matchups. How was fantasy for you this week? I mean, a few of mine, like I think three of them are coming down to tonight. Because like I said, I got Lamar in two leagues. So I'm, I need him to have a, a huge game. And then I got – I'm going against Tyreek Hill. Also, so I need him to, you know, be a little, he could be quiet today. He could be, he could be loud next week. He could run crazy and, and all that stuff. But tonight I'm going to need a little, a little quiet, quiet time from Tyreek. But yeah, it's, look, it was, it was rough. I got blown out in a couple matchups or one matchup. Let me not say a couple. I got blown out in one. And I mean, Dak, he did help me in one. That's the only place he helps is in fantasy because he's he loses in, in real life. Back, back. Russell Wilson showed up big for me on all my teams. I got Russell Wilson. He pulled out uh, Nick Chubb, Carolina's backup running back, who's the starter now. Davis had a good, big game. I think he's going to have that pretty much for the rest of the year um, until McCaffrey comes back. Mm -hmm. They relied – McCaffrey, Miles Davenport, whoever the running back, they rely on – the running back heavy, so he's going to get the touches and the looks. And of course, Alvin Kamara went crazy oh, last. Yeah, I I passed on him in the draft in in one of my leagues, and I'm playing the guy who took him. And 
he he went off for him last night and that last touchdown catch was that run was crazy i was i was hurt because that like i gave him like a 20 something point boost and i'm just like yeah it might be slow to this week in uh in fantasy but hey i still got lamar to go so i'm i'm praying that he has one of those games he did last year maybe five touchdowns you know 100 yards rushing Lamar, if you hear me, if you're listening, just I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. That, that's definitely wishful thinking on that one. Um, <laughs> but this is the end of this episode. As y'all know, we are on all streaming platforms. Hit us up to get your benchmark gear. Uh, support us on Anchor. Uh, but stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. Benchmark, we out. Peace.